Thanks to Toyota's brand new, previously unheard of engine type, EVs are set to become a thing of the past. As we investigate Toyota's new engine that will demolish the entire EV sector, buckle up and get ready for a full turnabout in the automotive world. This new engine that Toyota has been working on is touted to be the most environmentally friendly engine in existence. Surprisingly, the engine that Toyota is developing is a water-powered engine that is comparable to their SCEVs, such as the Toyota Mirai, and their internal combustion engines that run on hydrogen, like the 1.6-liter hydrogen three-cylinder that they just created. As for the history, water engines have always been one of the greatest aspiration points of the entire car industry, as they promise huge benefits over regular engines and EVs, and there have been countless attempts at making water-powered engines viable and reliable for day-to-day -day usage to no avail. And well, that's exactly where Toyota is about to jump in with their all-new water engine, as unlike most of the previous attempts, which were literally made in sheds with limited budgets, Toyota has proper funding and can actually test out the engine in all possible conditions. How does the water engine actually function? The engine itself is, for all intents and purposes, similar to the hoe generator with only a few minor differences that make it better suited for daily usage in vehicles. The engine itself is actually very similar to the hydrogen combustion engine found in the Toyota Yaris GR2, except that instead of using already processed hydrogen, the engine itself processes it and separates hydrogen from oxygen by creating a chemical reaction. In essence, the engine uses the process of electrolysis to separate the H2O molecules. Hydrogen and oxygen get separated once the electrodes, which are located in the tank that contains the water, start emitting high voltages. Since the hydrogen itself is contained within the water when it's stored in the tank, there's no reason for heavily armored and extremely heavy tanks, which is the case with FCVs and hydrogen combustion engines, since hydrogen alone is extremely hard to contain. The process of powering the vehicle is where the similarities between hydrogen combustion engines and water engines start, as after it gets separated from oxygen, hydrogen is then sent to the engine, where it combusts similarly to compressed natural gas, and the overall way the engine itself functions is similar to CNG-powered ones. The fuel injectors need to be adapted for compressed gas, and the cylinder heads, pistons, and valves need to be armored as hydrogen itself is highly combustible, making its detonation quite meaty, which is why it needs stronger components. What are the long-term benefits to the environment? Well, first of all, it's almost completely zero emissions compared to regular internal combustion engines, similar to EVs, while also being far more convenient than EVs. Actually, scrap that, it's more convenient than any other engine type out there. As long as you have access to diluted water, you'll be able to refuel it, and it'll also cost you next to nothing. Also, there will be much less need for extracting oil, as if the engine goes mainstream, the only real branch of the entire industry where fossil fuels might be used is heavy machinery or large power production units. Furthermore, there will be no need for extracting rare metals from the earth which is one of the dirtiest processes in the entire car industry at the moment, as it directly pollutes both the water sources and the soil surrounding the mine, making its imminent surrounding area completely uninhabitable. Also, if we were to compare water engines to hydrogen combustion engines and SCEs, which are also marketed as zero emissions, we could see that they are far superior in this regard too, as storing water requires little to no effort, whereas storing hydrogen alone requires much more thought, specific conditions, and above all, much, much more money, while also being significantly more harmful to the environment. You see, hydrogen in its sole form is a gas that is extremely hard to contain and can easily escape from the tank of a vehicle if there is any sort of irregularity with it, which means that the tanks will need to be armored constantly monitored and regularly taken care of, whereas the fuel tank for water-powered vehicles can, hypothetically, be virtually any plastic container. Furthermore, 
Storing hydrogen outside of the car itself is a drag too, as it requires ideal temperature conditions, similarly needing to be completely static and completely indestructible, which once again costs a lot of money, whereas distilled water can be bought in any well-stocked supermarket, or if you know basic chemistry can actually be pro at home also, expensive process, and it, combined with the numerous problems that surround the storage of the gas itself, is the reason why hydrogen hasn't yet caught on, and probably never will. Producing and storing hydrogen costs a lot of money, which in turn raises the price of the gas itself for the consumer, making us question why would you even buy hydrogen cars if they both are more expensive to buy and run compared to EVs and fossil fuel vehicles. So even though they're very green and logistically simple to use and run in theory, the question remains, are water engines actually daily usable? Yes, they are. First of all, they're not gutless at all, as some might believe, as a water-powered engine is on par with most gasoline engines, and in theory, they can be made more powerful than regular internal combustion engines, as they can generate up to three times more megajoules of energy compared to gasoline engines. They're also much safer than all the other engine types, as no highly combustible fuels constantly being stored inside of the car. So there's no need to worry about the car going up in flames or even exploding like fireworks going wrong. They're also very easy to produce, as their relatively simple mechanical designs are just a tad more complicated than regular gasoline engines. They're much simpler and cheaper to produce than both EVs and SCVs. And due to their nature, they would be a perfect option for motorizing countries that aren't well developed and are not rich with oil. In fact, for this reason alone, an Iranian scientist decided to convert his Peugeot 405 to run on water and actually succeeded at doing so. The scientist Aladin Qasimi managed to produce a fully functional conversion for his old car and turned it into a true technological marvel. Imagine what Toyota could do with proper funding if a man in a shed could make a daily drivable, water-powered car. However, the conclusion is not that simple, as there are a myriad of issues that water engines have been experiencing in the past. First of all are the logistical issues. Although the infrastructure would need little to no adjustments, the engine technology is still highly experimental, and most of the quote-unquote functional prototypes have been very unreliable, and their daily usability has been mediocre at best. You don't believe us? Well, there are rumors that they've already done that some 25 years ago with the first ever officially fully functioning water-powered car. The inventor of the car, Stanley Allen Meyer, was, according to him and his brother, in constant danger and was receiving constant threats from people that were most likely representatives of oil companies that could have been jeopardized by the popularization of the water engine. He was even offered millions to destroy his vehicle and the plans surrounding it, and never mentioned it again.